my experience as a content creator very small content creator in 2024. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt, this is Dwyer Creatives, and today I wanted to go over my tips and kind of experience as a relatively new content creator on YouTube. If you don't know my channel, I started this back in January, 2024. We are now in April, so it's been about three, four months. I just really wanted to share my experience and then tips for anyone maybe starting out coming from again a small time creator the first thing that i'm going to say is the biggest thing that i think a lot of people have a problem with is getting behind the camera and this is just something that you're just going to go ahead and do and i would say that if you're thinking about it or even if you're trying to do it just try to get as much time as you can behind the camera that's the way i found is the easiest way to kind of get more used to being behind it because even now for me you know it still doesn't feel natural and i'll say that because when i was running a media department for an off-road company part of my job was to be on all their social medias and be a content creator with that and i was forced to be behind the camera every single day as you know, another day passed and another day passed and another month and another year of doing it, I got more and more used to it. But even now, you know, I am an introvert, it still doesn't feel completely natural, but I definitely think that it's a lot different from the first time I did that. The next thing that I would say that with my experience is I suggest having somewhere that you can centralize your strategy for your channel. And what I use is Notion. If you don't know what it is, it's kind of like a database that you can customize for yourself, I guess. I ended up making a template that I can use for my YouTube channel, and for me, it's really helped. And I've broken this down into a few different parts. I have a place where I can pull my ideas, and then I have a place where I can put those ideas on the calendar. And then I have another place where I can open up those ideas and add little things like, what should the thumbnail be like? Hey, what are good titles for this? Or what should the script be like? What B-roll do I need for that? So having somewhere you can just centralize it and to really lock down your strategy for everything. Going along with that, I think having a content calendar is very important. Social media manager and me always had some sort of calendar, whether it was two weeks out, four weeks out, you know, three months out, having a generalized calendar of what content you wanted to do. Going back to having that pool of ideas, you can pull from that, you can switch things around, push it back, move it up. It really does help having a content calendar to follow. So in for that content calendar, you really wanna make sure that you have a realistic schedule that you can stick to. For me, I'm in this for the long game and for you, probably a similar idea. This is something that I want to maybe eventually become my job or something like that. Hopefully down the road, we can make that happen. But it's, I'm looking at the long-term game. You wanna make sure that your goals and your schedule is realistic. For me, I plan on doing two videos a week. I have my two minute Tuesday and then my other video, which I had been doing on Thursday. And recently I've changed to doing that on Friday. And it's one of those things I just had to pivot because it works better for my schedule, my creative process. It allows me a little bit more time to breathe and to make sure that I'm actually executing my ideas the best that I can. Now for you, if you're able to dedicate all your time to this and you can do five videos a week, do five videos a week. But make sure like if you're looking at that long term, are you gonna be able to do five videos a week this week, next week, the week after, next month? because that burnout is real. Even me just doing these two videos every week, I have felt that burnout. And it's one of those things like, eventually it will hit you and you just have to push past that wall. But I think it's definitely more doable if you made sure that you had a realistic schedule for yourself. Is that one video a week? Is that one video every other week? For me, I just really believe that if you have that consistency and you have that realistic schedule, you're more likely to stick to it and you're going to be more likely to succeed with your channel. Going back to the whole uh, content creation process with your calendar and your idea pool and everything, part of my process that I have added, which I didn't have in the beginning, was that I'm now scripting out more of each episode. And this can be very detailed or just mild bullet points. I'm kind of in that middle thing. I'll do like a mock script and then I'll dial it back to main key points because I want it to be more natural and maybe I want to go in a different direction when I'm doing it. But I want to have those key bullet points out so that I can just reference it and be like, hey, oh, point A, blah, 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 point B, blah, 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 blah. And you're not having those downtimes so where you're just kind of wasting your time because you're just like, oh, what was that? Um, 
point A was, you know, a uh, one, two, and three. Point B was, I don't really remember what it was. You'll see as you do this more and more, maybe those 30 seconds in between topics for a longer video can be a few minutes. And then on the editing side, you gotta cut those out if you're not using AI to help you. And all of that adds up to your time that you can be using for something else. Now, when you are recording yourself, something that I believe in and recommend is make sure you invest in good audio. You can have a horribly shot video, but with good audio, people are more likely to watch it as opposed to, you know, this perfectly cinematic video. And then you have this trash audio that's clipping, that's just absolute like garbage to your ears just is something that a lot of people underestimate and something that will really make your video step out above the rest of them especially if they haven't invested the same amount of time into that audio so if you are looking at gear make sure you do invest some time and some of your money into having good audio you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive thing i started with this little road compact mic and for me that worked for a while then i moved up to the dji mic one and now i'm using combination of the dji mic one and two so i'm going to try to wrap this up here and the last thing i'm going to leave you all with is that i think it's really important to be yourself and that's again something that i'm learning to do and trying to bring more of myself out in my videos because there's only one you and there's only one perspective from you no one else will have your exact opinion and see things your exact way and this is something that like uh, I'll reference photography because, you know, I love photography and I do that here is you can give 10 different photographers the same exact camera, the same exact film, and they can go out and take the same picture of the same item and come out with different results. And to take that further, you can give 10 different photographers a raw image. And they will all edit it a different way because they all have a different style, aesthetic, and they have a different preference on the way that they edit. And that's gonna be the same thing for these YouTube videos. You are the only person that will have your opinion and you will have a certain style that you develop over time for your channel, the way that you shoot it, the way that you film it, the way that you do your audio, the way that you edit it, the way that you color grade it, you know, all the, the entire process. You're the only one that will be doing this. Of course, over time, maybe you'll outsource bits and pieces of those, but hopefully by then you'll have your specific style. And even then that's gonna be in your vision. Hopefully you find this useful. If you have any questions or comments, you know, as I always say, leave those down below. I really appreciate any new subscribers because I have noticed that I've been getting a few more lately. And I really appreciate any comments that you all leave. Uh, the engagement is something that I do look forward to, especially when it's either constructive criticism or, you know, finding out that, hey, you did like that video so that I know that I'm doing the right thing. And I'll kind of leave this off there. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.